Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue our series on aligning different enlargers with the Durst M301. The Durst M301 is a small 35 millimeter enlarger. It is basically exactly the same as the larger medium format 66, I think, or M601, something like, something like that. So the adjustments on here are going to be the same on either one. It's a very simple enlarger. Most are going to be a condenser head. There are color heads available. I can't find one here in the US uh, that has the transformer. Uh, but it is a good enlarger, but it does have a, well, kind of a fixed lens. We'll talk about that in a minute. The head allows you to go very low, up, quite high. We'll get up there. And then you can even loosen this knob on the back and raise it up even more. And that gives you about an 11 by 14 maybe even a 12 by 16 image from a 35 millimeter negative. Now, we don't need it to have it up there for this video, so we'll put it back down to a more eight by 10 working height. The adjustments on this are not factory made. Uh, there are some points where we can adjust but for the most part, we're going to be shimming different things. If you need to level the base on the table, then underneath there are these small feet that are screwed on that you can loosen with a screwdriver and then shim with either a washer or some kind of brass shim stock that you can then just cut with some scissors and, and put in there. And that will allow you to adjust the table to whatever platform you have this set on. When it comes to aligning the head, there are not specific adjustments uh, other than side to side, but any sort of forward and back motion, we're going to have to shim as well as the lens. So to do that, if you need to move the column forward or back, then you would loosen this screw on the bottom of the base, which would allow you to place shim material underneath. And so if you need to tilt the base back away from you, the user, because I'm standing behind it, then you would put shim material under the front ledge. And if you were tilting the column forward, you would place it under the back edge and then tighten that screw in order to check the alignment. Now for side to side motion, it's much easier. We're going to take this out, take out the negative carrier. And to check this alignment, I'm going to use a double mirror um, enlarging system here. So I'm going to take the top piece and put it where the negative carrier was. and then the bottom piece underneath. And for side to side, we have on the back of the head, this large screw. And you can loosen that and then tilt the head. Now this is originally was for projecting onto a wall, but it does give a certain degree of adjustment. It does have a detent whether or not that detent is accurate, eh, we're about to find out. So using the mirror, I'm going to look down through the hole and look for that infinite mirror. And we are off just a little. There we go. We'll tighten that down. And there we have the head aligned side to side as well as front to back. Now to align the lens, 
it's quite a bit different. On this one, the lens is permanently affixed to the lens board. And I noticed that the lens is not parallel uh, or perpendicular to that lens board. It's permanently affixed. I can't change anything, can't remove it. <clears throat> so what I did find was while turning the lens and lens board assembly, my infinite uh, reflection moved um, and rotated to different positions. So that's what made me investigate that. If the entire assembly here was off, then I would expect it to be out of alignment, but as I turned the lens, nothing would change. Um, but because it's the lens itself, that's a problem. So what I would recommend you do, because it's a round lens board, is put a mark on the lens and board, or I'm sorry, the lens board and the enlarger in a straight line so that you can always place this in the same position every time because we're gonna to have to remove this multiple times as we fix it. So to check alignment, I'm gonna put my tool up against the lens and again, check for that infinite mirror. And right now it's off diagonally and I only want to have to correct it one direction. So I'm going to rotate it until it's only off front to back and is aligned side, side to side. From here, I know that I've got side to side alignment, but now I need front to back. And to do that, I'm going to place some tape on the front, the uh, front edge of the mating surface of the lens board. And that will tilt it forward and forward a little bit more, depending on how many pieces of tape, until I have it aligned. Okay, we've got some progress. Let's do a little bit more. What I'm using is just post-it note torn off, because that's what I've got today. Well, and there we are. That's it perfectly. Okay, so now we have our negative stage parallel to the baseboard. We have the lens stage parallel to the lens board. As long as I don't physically twist this lens, it'll stay there. Uh, I can turn the aperture without any issue, but the actual lens, I won't be able to rotate. Uh, and then of course, the lens and negative stage are parallel to one another and that will give me the most accurate sharpness across the entire image, as well as uh, eliminating any possibility of keystoning the image uh, and just not getting a, a square cornered rectangle. So that's it. This is a very simple machine to adjust simply because there's only a couple of places to do things. To summarize, adjust the baseboard to the table as needed with shims between the board and its leveling foot. At the head stage, the negative carrier can be aligned by shimming the column front to back or rotating the head side to side. The lens stage is going to be simply through shimming. Now, if your lens is actually mounted to a lens board square, as it should be, there will probably not be any adjustment needed here as the casting is most likely pretty square. And this is the kit lens that came with it. I'm not gonna use the kit lens. I wanna try to find another lens board or 3D print one if I have to and mount my own Companon S uh, 50 millimeter lens, which is a lens I much prefer over this one in terms of quality. But otherwise, it's fairly straightforward. So that should take care of it if you have this model or the larger medium format model, 
all the adjustments are going to be about the same. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll provide any answers that I can. Otherwise, thank you for watching. If you're thinking about getting one of these machines, they're very well made, especially for their age. They are easy to maintain and adjust, and they'll give you years and years of fantastic prints. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.